Okay, my friends, this is going to be kind of shocking. Uh, I've been talking about dipole electron flood theory for quite some time, and it changes the atomic model, and it solves all the problems, basically all the problems. And I'm going to explain it to you right now, and uh, very quickly, briefly, and then we're going to have to have some conversation about this. But we've been working on, you know, setting up some documentation, information, supported by evidence. So let's see what documentation we have and what evidence supports it. Okay, my friends, I'm going to really run through this quick, I hope. It's a little complicated, but um, it's, it's, it's actually quite simple. It replaces the standard model of atomic physics with dipole electron flood theory, which means everything there is is a dipole. There is and I'll explain it to you in, in great detail as we go along, but the proton is not as advertised. The proton is not one huge positive only core and then one or s several little electrons floating. It's not that way at all. It's all made of dipoles in the core. Now there's two possibilities here and we're going to get into those. There's the layered possibility and then there's the surrounded possibility. But one way or the other, the electrons are always, 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 always on the outside of all matter. They are they, they glob around matter. So we've never seen the dark particles because they're inside. That's why you, they, they can't find dark matter. It's inside the white matter. But when you splash these particles out, which we have done through a Venturi, you can literally divide the black from the white. Let me show you this, this was done by a, a good friend of mine, Oscar Rosales. I think we're going to write a book and show all of the experiments we did and how it, it comes to play with reality, splitting these particles. Let me show you just briefly and then we'll go through this very quickly and then I want some, some responses. Okay, you can come up and look at this. We've been doing this for almost 10 years now. And this was the particles we saw from Fermilab, which they say is the smallest particle that exists, this black one, and then this puffy white one. It gets big, it gets small, this one never changes. This is a muon neutrino, and that's an electron neutrino. Together, the both together, make up what they call a Dirac neutrino. And I, I, we found exactly, exactly identical to what they have found. The extended particle, the fixed one, which is the black one, never changes. It may have a fuzzy edge around it. Absolutely it does. The point-like particles are mathematical extractions, zero size. I agree. They have no weight whatsoever. When you fill your car up with electricity, it doesn't change any, any weight whatsoever. You can fill it all the way up, drive 500 miles, it weighs the exact same amount. There is no weight that I can find to the white particles, and he says the same thing. They're zero size particles, but they have an effect because of their field. Now, I got to be honest with you, I still don't really fully understand how they can be non, just nothing, and have, have some huge effect, which they do. Absolutely amazing, that white. That's what drives your car. And again, it has no weight whatsoever to it. None. Zero. All right, this is why I have to put the book out, is because this is that particle with the glowy edge around it, and it's black, never changes, and this is the puffy one. Here it is right here. These are, this is called dipoles. Every time you see the black and the white together, it's just exactly identical to a bar magnet. Right? And they're back to back. Just like you took two bar magnets, they won't go together unless you put them in the right orientation. Snap! And then they are solid as can be. That's what electrons and photons are. Photons are the smallest particle that exists it's stable. All right? Photons, light. That's the smallest particle that exists that's stable. They bounce and they hit your eye and they transfer energies and so forth. Below the photon is the electron, which is that right there. All right? That's what heat is. Heat is made out of this. All right? Electricity is made just out of this. And that's why when you fill your car up with electricity, it doesn't change any, any weight whatsoever. And here's what we just did, is to separate it without doing any work. We just shot the laser into a Venturi, separated the white completely away from the black. All right, and that 
it's fission. And that's fusion on the subatomic scale. It's the smallest particles that exist. And here's how it happens. We shoot the laser into the Venturi, and the Venturi says only the black guys can come through there. The white guys stay out. I mean, I'm sorry, only the white guys can come through. The black guys have to stay out because they're too big. They're too big and solid. You see? This is, this is slit is so infinitesimally small that only the white can squirt down. And you can see it squirts. You see it getting tiny? These are big. That's it. It's never going to change. It has a glowy edge around identical to what they say at CERN and Fermilab. No difference whatsoever. And this one can get tiny and squirt right through that slit. If the sl slit is this size, the black one comes down and boings out. Bang, boing, boing, bing, bong, bong. Can't get through. This one goes burp and squirts right through. Precisely what I show you right here. All right. If you can see what that slit is, it's just nothing basically but it's it's a venturi it's not just a flat plate that's the key because we harvested all those fields into that venturi and then you, you get explosion like a, a tom, literally a subatomic it is a subatomic bomb that right there my friends is a subatomic nuclear explosion it's exactly what it is and I, I, again, I've got a, a white paper on this, and, and we're going to have to do a book all about the different interactions. I've got literally hundreds of pictures of light experiments. All right, so you've seen that this is exactly identical. And he's talking about the standard model here, and then he talks about the quantum foam, which I also agree with. Quantum foam is nothing more than light particles coming through space. And it's, it just makes a foamy thing. And they bang into each other here and there, and then they glow a little bit. As, as I will show you how they do glow when they interact with each other. And they call it a quantum foam. It says a blinking eye. Well, here's what it says. The foam on the head of a root beer is complicated. It's a complicated environment. Bubbles appearing and disappearing. Dizzying display of boom, 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 boom. Snapping on and off. Empty space is the same thing. Similar activity. Subatomic particles, light, winking in and out of existence, hitting each other. And when they do, they light up. These ephemeral subatomic particles are real and have a measurable impact on our universe, which means light slows down as it approaches from its source. As it leaves its source, it slows down. I can show you that as well in our experiments. Which means that light is not a continuous speed. We can slow it down, we can speed it up. So that means that everything they've done in space, looking for galaxies, it's three billion light years away, the universe is expanding. No, none of that stuff is true. Light is slowing down. Right. I just want you to know that this is what we did. We separated the light. And here's, I showed you this already. These are the particles from Fermilab. And, but they just see them in, in debris. We see them as they propagate. And we can actually see them as they turn into neutrinos and then into photons as they gain energy. That's what light is all about. It comes from neutrinos. You see this here? These are like neutrinos. And they're gaining energy and then they turn into photons and the reason is they're going to hit that venturi we have the they don't you normally don't see a photon it it doesn't turn into a photon normally i don't think until it bangs against a wall or something that's when it, it turns into light but in the meantime it's these kind of particles here that don't have a real formation to them but these do because they are packing up against themselves now, there's a lot to speak about this, and the book will have it all, but they're starting to come around. You see this? Strange landscape particles inside a proton, mapped like never before. They're showing there's a dipoles inside. They're trying to nibble around the edges because they don't understand what they're talking about, but I've been putting this stuff out for almost 10 years, and there's no way for them to deny it. I've worked with Fermilab, and um, finally they just told me to get lost because I was coming with too much evidence. Basically, that's the way I see it.
All right, I'm going to wrap this up quick because this is not a joke. We need to get some people on board that are looking at this because this is what we need to have right here is free energy. And I don't see any reason we can't have it. The white stuff is the only stuff you put in your car or in a battery. And that's where that white stuff came through that Venturi. And if we had it in a shoebox like this, just something that size, all kinds of different outlets. Click it any way you want and, have, and be any, anything you want. You could have so much electricity and never be able to use it. Because all we do is harvest the white. In order to, to break the white off of the black, it takes a ton of energy. In order to break these two apart, you either have to hit them head on so violently that they explode, or you have to put them through a Venturi tuned correctly. And you want to see how tuned you can get this? Watch this. This one, there's not a taste of, of black in here. Zero, 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 none, zero. You see it? They all back off. And then somehow they reattach over here. There's got to be extra ones floating around. Again, this is stuff we have to discover. And here it is, the particle accelerating. Here it is, gaining energy. Here's the explosion. Zero, zero blackness. All right, well, watch this. Watch this maze on me. Where is it? Boom. This one's tuned so that 99% of the black doesn't get through but the white does as well. Now, if you go to somebody that understands nuclear physics, this is what's called a Whistler wave. It's in the sub light range. It's below, it's kind of a, a noise. It makes, it makes that kind of a noise when an atomic bomb goes off, which is this. Literally, that's what it is. If you were standing out here, instantaneously, you'd hear, and this stuff would go by you. Now, a second later, this is being pushed. And whatever is here is going to burn up like a house. And I've shown this a bazillion times. And then all of a sudden the black hits it and knocks it away. This is the concussion wave. This is the whistler wave. And that is tuned to allow both to come through. Like I said, it's a completely new. The light doesn't go like that. And the reason you get these patterns like this is because of waves going back and forth like this. This is a single slit and light is spinning. It spins just like a drill bit. You see it here? It's exactly what it is. Light spins. Now, and I can prove that in another shot with the blue. I can see, show the white. Here it comes. And the reason it's drifting that way is it's spinning to the right and slowing down. That's where light is slowing down. You see it speeded up, slowing down out here. Well, Einstein was wrong, and it's caused us a hundred years of just playing around, playing games. All right, and that's the particle, and then the blue and the green one are all the same. Here's the green one. All right, but they're just faster spin. And here, here, I think I have one showing them both at the same time. Hold on a second, I get it. See, this, this is ultra cool. This is both the green and the red at the same time coming through the same Venturi. The green is just as powerful as you can see. The red just gets pushed out of the way. And here you can see some of the red is getting caught up amongst the green. And this is not really photons. These are in the photon phase. These are in the little blurry phase of neutrinos. It's a very, very strange world in this subatomic realm. All right, so that's enough of that stuff. And if we can get electron showers, we can get trillions of electron volts. Now, I said there was two possibilities. This is the core dipole, all right? This one here is the layer dipoles, where there could be the black big core in the center and then the really tight-held stuff, the blue, and then a black and then a green and then a black and then a red. And the red would always be on the outside. So that's the possibility. All right, one or the other, as far as I'm concerned. Now, this is a download for white paper, and I'll put a, a, a link to this. And this talks about the anatomy of the proton, how it's built. There's 1,823 of these dipoles, 824 for a neutron. And it, it, this is the particles that make up the nucleus. That's it. That's it. That's it right there. The white electron, the dark muon. This gets bigger and smaller and has no mass. You fill your car up with that and it changes nothing as far as weight goes. And you can drive 500 miles, whatever it is. All you got to do is be able to pull that away from the black because they're normally really tight. It's a strong subatomic force. So that's the white, that's the dark. 
and this is the differences from the standard model um, and that because this is all that exists the gluons electrons these are the dipole photons and these are the tiniest particles now when you talk about the things that they have in in uh, the science books it's just it's uh it's not good <laughs> It's not good at all. It's just, it's nonsense. And as a matter of fact, if you go to Yale on YouTube and look up Professor Shankar on quantum, the first thing he says to the kids, he says, nobody understands this, so just say what I tell you and you'll be all right. I'm not kidding you. That's a fact. So anyway, you can download the white paper right here. And this is, the, this was, I wrote this long ago. And um, this is academia. And uh, hold on a second. What happened to my paper? Oh. All right, here we go. This, I, this is on academia.edu. I put stuff up there. I got quite a few papers up there. And this was from 6, six of 2023. But I had this 50 years ago, and it was denied. I said, you cannot have one gigantic positive and little tiny negatives. And I get out of here, spur, you're an idiot. And that's up until today. <laughs> So this is the paper about dipole electron flood theory, and um, and it talks about it. And there's a couple of pages here. See, we use a CMOS for high luminosity. They they actually change the receiving stuff at CERN after I went to University of Geneva, and I told them I said we're using CMOS. They said you can't use CMOS because it destroys because the particles destroy it. I said, no, we're working with light so we can use CMOS. What they did, they upgraded magnets to focus, just like I showed you how we can focus, and they upgraded to use CMOS, exactly as I explained to them. All right, and then they opened back up again, Large Hadron Collider is smashing protons again after a three-year hiatus. It took them three years to upgrade. And what they did was they, they came up with something to allow the... the, the um, electrons to come out and not come out in a major mass. So anyway, this is all about what changed from the standard model. We got a lot to go over here due to dipole flood theory, what changes in chemistry and space, chemistry, space, so forth. I, I'm not going to go through the whole thing here. It's, it's here. It's very simple to find. And I'll put links to this stuff. And if you come up here and it says some crazy thing, do what I did. Try to click around. <laughs> okay, that's it, my friends. Wouldn't you love to have something like this? You could just walk around with it and plug things into it. Whatever you want. And you could have a selector on here to say I'm 110, 120, 220, 240. Any voltage you want. AC, DC. USB. It will accommodate everything there is now, and you could have other things that would be for the new things that are coming up. Of course, this is a Geiger counter, but you just something small like this. Very, very small. You see, this would be very tiny, and it'd be extremely powerful, I believe. But it needs to be looked at, and that's what I'm hoping to accomplish with all of this uh, videos and YouTubes and so forth and I'm not really getting very fast very very far very fast but I guess these things take time but I don't think we have much left my friends the atmosphere is in total destruction the earth is collapsing from a German it's just, it's a nightmare if we had free electricity you just do anything you wanted and just carry that stuff around it wouldn't it matter a Tyson my friend is out there have a terrible terrible ice storm out on the west coast He's down for seven days, all the poles and everything. He could have just taken this and plugged it right in, and he'd be good to go. You see, you should, have, you should need no energy whatsoever to support this. You'd have a set of batteries in there that would continuously hold enough energy to fire it up if you shut it completely down. Once it's on, it's going to make enough energy to resupport itself. All right, I love you all. Stick around. This is going to be very, very interesting.